Experiment to determine coefficient of viscosity using Poiseuille's formula. So we're going to use Poiseuille's formula, a formula that we derived in our previous session, to define the coefficient of viscosity using this setup. If we are to look back on what we derived in our previous formula, we say that the volume flow rate is given by pi r to the power 4 p divided by 8 that times the coefficient of viscosity times r. Now, you realize that what we want here is this. We want to find the coefficient of viscosity, but we are trying to find the coefficient of viscosity using this formula. So it means that um, when we use when we try to find the coefficient of viscosity using this Poiseuille's formula, and this is the setup of our experiment, it means that in this experiment we are supposed to come up with the following. We need to find the volume flow rate using that apparatus. After finding the volume flow rate, of course, uh, we are supposed to find the radius of the pipe we are going to be using, the length of that pipe we are using. These, of course, are constants. Then also we, so we are supposed to know the change in pressure. Then we shall be able to find this. So looking at our apparatus right here, we are having this as a constant head tank. The, res the, 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 the use of this constant head tank is to ensure that there is a steady flow of liquid. From our tap here, you see that we are having some water that is coming in here. When it flows in here, it, um, only the, the water that comes through the tank Part of it is let into this into this beaker or this container right here so this is a constant water tank and the purpose of this constant water tank is to ensure that there is a steady flow of liquid through this capillary tube then we have this thermometer of course definitely we are supposed to measure the therm temperature of, uh, this liquid because as we are trying to find coefficient of viscosity coefficient of viscosity like we had discussed earlier is affected by temperature so because coefficient of viscosity is affected by temperature we definitely have to measure the temperature of the liquid now we also are supposed to take record of the capillary tubes radius now taking record of the capillary tubes radius we can use a traveling microscope or a micrometer screw gauge to do so so by measuring this we are trying to find the value of r which we are going to use in our equation then also we're supposed to take the temperature. We, are, we need to know the temperature this liquid is at. And also we have what we call the waste pipe. This waste pipe is simply a pipe that uh, you can adjust. You can either push it up. Of course, if you push this pipe up, it means that the water that is coming in here will have to raise to that level of the pipe before it flows out. To, to, to out to be wasted or if you want you can pull this pipe downwards and if it comes downwards it means that this water that is flowing into this constant head tank will have to rise up to the level of that pipe and then it follows back out of the pipe now the use of this waste pipe is more like to regulate the height of the water here so we can regulate this value of h the height of the water by regulating the pipe by pulling it up or down and by regulating this height we are in essence regulating the pressure exerted by this water since we all know that pressure in liquids um it is influenced by height or by depth of the liquid the deeper the liquid or the greater this height the greater is the pressure and if this height is less it means that the pressure is also less so now to get started with this experiment, what we do definitely, like from our equation, we need to get the volume flow rate. The volume flow rate V over T is obtained by collecting this liquid in a known time T. In other words, you're going to collect this liquid, you're going to get a stop clock and you measure how much liquid, you, you measure a specific amount of time. Let's say you're going to, you're, you're going to let this thing to flow for like, uh, one minute then after getting you, you, you close the tap and then you get how much volume of liquid has flown in that one minute so you get this volume of the liquid that has flown in one minute so you get the volume divide that by the time and then you're able to get the volume flow rate of this now when we are finding that volume flow rate you are doing it at a certain height h so what you do is that you adjust this waste pipe to, so that you obtain a new value of h 
after obtaining the new value of h, get another volume flow rate, V over t. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that you, opt you get the volume flow rate for different values of h. And how do you get the different values of h? By adjusting the waste pipe. Either you push it up so that the value of h increases or you push it down so that the value of h reduces. You get the, v of, the value of v over t for different values of h. And after doing so, you plot a graph of volume flow rate against the height because these are the two the two things we are you're varying as you're getting volume flow rate and the values of h you're going to plot a graph of v over t against h so you plot a graph of volume flow rate against height and as you plot this graph you, re you realize that when this value of h is still low the volume flow rate will be low but as you go on increasing this height using this waste pipe as you increase this height it means that this is going to increase the volume flow rate or the rate at which the, the rate of the volume flow rate into this is going to increase up to a point whereby it's going to become a turbulent flow because of the height has increased so much that now there is too much pressure going through when the pressure is too much it becomes it turns from laminar flow to turbulent flow and the volume flow rate there is going to inc to remain constant regardless of the height so this is the graph you plot as a result from the experiment you've carried out and after plotting that graph you go ahead and find the gradient of this graph let's get into our calculations and see how the gradient of this graph is going to correlate and it's going to help us to find the coefficient of viscosity of this liquid now this is Poiseuille's formula the one that we are using to find the coefficient of viscosity of the liquid this is what we're trying to look for right there but we know that this P here is the pressure difference now by pressure difference we are talking about the pressure that is caused by that very that height of liquid when that pressure we have the pressure on, on top there and then the pressure at the bottom we say that pressure in liquids depends on depth so now the difference between the, the pressure at where this capillary tube is and the pressure at the top there that difference in pressure is what we are dealing with calling the pressure difference here which is given by the height of that times the density of water times the gravity which is what we have substituted where we, there is pressure there is what we've put here height times density times gravity now that we have this height times density times gravity remember when we were carrying out this expression we were varying the volume flow rate with the height and so when we put this value of h outside here and the volume flow rate here you realize that this expression is in the form of y is equal to m x we know that the general equation of a straight line is given by y is equal to mx plus c, where c is the, um, it's, is the y-intercept. This value of m for a straight line equation is the gradient. It is a constant. And if you look through here, pi is a constant. The radius of this tube is a constant. It's not changing. The density of water is a constant. The, the gravity is a constant. 8 here is a constant. The coefficient of which we are looking for is this is what we're looking for then l the length of the tube is also a constant it doesn't change so it means that if we equate this m to this then we'll be able to get the coefficient of viscosity because remember this value of y so happens to be the v over t and this value of x so happens to be the h and from our graph we plotted a graph of, of volume flow rate which is acting as our value of y against h which is acting our value of x so this is a graph of y against x and the gradient of that graph is what we are calling the gradient m so this is like this is y that is our value of x and our gradient here is m so likewise if you look at this this is the volume flow rate which is that that axis against the value of h which is this axis and so it means that our value of m which is the gradient is equivalent to this expression here which is this so it means that this expression we've got is equivalent to our value of m right there so if we equate our value of m the gradient of this graph to this expression then we'll be able to get the coefficient of viscosity so that is exactly what we do the slope which is m is equated to the rest of this whole thing which is pi 
r to the power of 4 times the density times gravity divided by that by h times the coefficient of viscosity times l and when we make the coefficient of viscosity the subject of the formula like we've done in the next step then from there we are able to get the coefficient of viscosity using this expression and that is how we find the coefficient of viscosity using Poiseuille's formula. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Kisembo Academy, this is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.